How's it going out there, folks? Welcome back here to a Wednesday, 1114 a.m. That's California time here. October 22nd, 2025 is the date. Uh, latest activity here on the globe shows a 1.5 up into Alaska. Had a little shaker going on there across the Los Angeles area. Well, north of Los Angeles, early this morning, 3.2 earthquake coming in north of the Santa Paula area nine miles deep into this region not a big earthquake but you know we were we were doing the update last night and we talked about how the west coast was super quiet well right after i posted that video last night we started to see things light up out here across the west coast indicating further stress and movement in this area of the plate boundary of course which covers all of california and uh yeah sure enough a little bit of felt earthquake activity out there nothing big but it was felt lightly in the region even down around the glendale area uh, maybe even the lancaster region now this fault system that it struck on is the san Quint uh san Let's see if i can pronounce that correctly uh Cayanto. Cayeta oh man this is going to be a good one i can you know I, I grew up around a lot of hispanic people here uh, in northern california so i i do know some Spanish Cayetano Cayetano it looks like okay anyway <laughs> you put on the spotlight and it's like uh, blah, 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 blah. say what oh, anyway this is a thrust fault here around the base of these mountains where this 3.2 came in it does look like there's a little aftershock in there uh, further north up into the subduct well it's not a subduction zone but it's a thrust fault indicating um, instead of a strike slip boundary like some of these other faults here you get the interaction between the, these two faults here and it's just kind of pushing up on this area uh, creating the mountain ranges up here of course and that that area um is starting to light up out here this is the last 30 days within that same region of that fault system we had a 2.0 back here uh, a couple days ago uh, but we're starting to see you know areas of interest out here showing some movement that really hasn't had any activity in a long time and this fault system where the 3.2 struck today uh, is capable of producing a decent sized earthquake around 6.5 to 7.3 now look right here though okay it's a thrust fault obviously most recent rupture less than about 5,000 years ago now the slip rate is that's pretty low that's actually a really low slip rate so it does take thousands of years to build up enough strain the funny uh, i shouldn't say funny thing but the serious thing here is that it's probably been about that long ago so here we are you know thousands of years here in the future with nine up to nine mm per year accumulating per year you know that's uh, it could put us here where we're looking at maybe a larger event taking place here on that area similar to the Puente Hills thrust fault here underneath Los Angeles area uh, that had a lot of activity stirring up on it last year uh, some movement on it today or uh, in the last 30 days most of the activity here has been on the Newport Inglewood fault uh, that's uh, another another fault system here in Southern California is capable of big earthquakes it's a basin of fracture boundaries that's all it is it's an it's an interaction area between the Pacific plate and the North American plate and the Garlock fault shear zone adds further stress out here building up that strain that's why you get all these fracture boundaries away from the main plate boundary and that's yeah it's unfortunate because you know look at the population density that's built up out here in the last couple hundreds hundred years or so uh, not a couple hundreds of years, but yeah, it's, well, I guess so, huh? We're in 2025. We've really built up, though, here uh, in the last hundred years. But anyway, thousands of years have passed, capable up to a magnitude 7.3 about 5,000 years ago. All right, we got to watch that because it is starting to show some life out there. And when it does, that's, you know, could be a sign that this thing may be getting ready to pop. Just one of many systems out here that are um, I feel well overdue along with the plate boundary so this is just it is not you know it, eventually this quietness is going to fill in in a big fashion that's just the cold hard truth uh, for now though 3.2 that is probably going to be the largest earthquake out here oh let's see definitely in the last week well, I'm just trying to think if yeah that's been actually in the last 30 days that's the largest event 
pretty crazy, huh? That's why I've been saying California has been pretty quiet down here in terms of any, uh, really any earthquake activity aside from the microquake movement. So we get this 3.2 stirred up late last night. Watch these, uh, watch these fault systems that are wait awakening. Of course, got to watch the plate boundary as well. That's the San Andreas fault. So looking at the West Coast here, uh, 2.6 out in Tonopah from last night. Really nothing else going on above 2.5 across California. Uh, there's a little clustering going on here along the Garlock Fault Shear Zone. That's been an area of interest here because it's uh, it swarmed like crazy when um, California had a bunch of these fours stirring up last year. Remember, this area was just swarming along with it. No, no big earthquake activity, just hundreds and hundreds of earthquakes stirring up here. And uh, it's a sign, you know, that, uh, well, it's a shear zone. It kind of acts as a, uh, a blockade, I guess, a little bit here to accumulate a shear type stress in this region. And it's, it's just crazy how much swarming it stirred up here. Now it's starting to swarm up again as we get increasing activity here in Southern California. So just watch that. I, I believe the Garlock Fault Shear Zone and the San Andreas Fault play a major part in um, the way things work down here. You know, it, you got a major plate boundary, the North American plate, and the Pacific plate, this little shear boundary here that kind of stretches across here as well. It's uh, it's no match for the uh, the incredible stress that builds up here along this area of the plate boundary, and it's just. Uh, I do think this one's capable of a large event, which could trigger the San Andreas Fault and vice versa. Uh, just a lot of potential out here. Uh, the Hayward Fault, uh, this activity here from yesterday had a couple twos stirring up on it. Nothing big. Uh, again, before last night, I was saying how quiet everything was. And it's definitely a little eerie there. But picking up slightly today... Uh, Northern California, one earthquake off the coast there from last night. Looking into the uh, Pacific Northwest, got a handful of earthquakes there. Uh, one north of Seattle, that's north of the Seattle Fault. And that's, man, that's another area that's got potential to produce a 7.5 earthquake directly underneath Seattle. And it takes a couple thousands of years there to build up enough strain to produce that type of magnitude. And guess what? Uh, it's been a couple thousands of years there uh, since a big earthquake struck on that. Let's go check out the um, uh, volcano activity up there real quick. See what we got. By the way, this is the trimmer counts from last night. Slow slip event, 78. A little lower number compared to what we've seen here in the last couple weeks. Uh, we'll start off here at Mount Rainier, see if there's anything stirring up. I know we got storm systems coming in here may show up on the graphs as like high wind and a little bit of background noise maybe coming in right here it looks like a couple smaller earthquakes there on the graph nothing big checking out mount st helens here real quick i go to these recorded seismographs because i've just uh, i've you know i've looked at these for many many years here and the ratio to how many earthquakes are actually occurring to what is published on the the public page you know it doesn't match <laughs> it should be equal but uh, i know some of these earthquakes here you're not going to be able to pinpoint and determine the exact location and whatnot but there's a couple out there in the uh, background noise of the seismograph stations there uh, but really not a whole lot going on up there across the volcanoes for now in the yellowstone national park a couple smaller earthquakes outside the area quick glance at that seismograph let's go see here if it's gonna pull up there we go nothing really not a whole lot going on there at Yellowstone right now a couple weeks back here we had a little spitter spatter event of just like an hour or so of, of heavy earthquake activity nothing big but we had like a bunch uh, but I don't see anything really stirring up out there right now just some smaller microquake activity outside the region oil fields though they're rocking and rolling out here today North American plate under quite a bit of stress inland and away from the plate boundary. Uh, got about 31 earthquakes here in the last 24 hours. Lighten up out here today, though, outside of Pecos, Texas, near Big Spring, Midland. A lot of oil fields out there in the uh, Permian Basin region. All right, taking a look here at the world view of things. See what we got going on here today. 
Um, look at this trail of activity leading up from the Java Trench all the way up northward. That's pretty neat to follow. Um, so that means more than likely, well, there's this is an older quake of 4.3, but uh, good possibility we could see that further fill in across this region. It just kind of track it along there. Nothing big going on in the area today, just a bunch of threes and maybe a four pointer or so. There's a 4.9 deep underneath Sumatra area. Uh, it's going to be this earthquake right here. About 43 miles deep here into the northern end of the Java Trench. This area obviously capable of producing mega quakes. Um, nothing big going on there for now. Uh, Japan, a couple older quakes up here northward into the Kamchatka area. This is some older quake activity. Um, New Zealand, three-pointer down there. Looks like South Island region. A lot of older activity from yesterday northward there. And... Uh, a lot of older activity from yesterday as well in this region. The red rings obviously indicating older activity. The white rings, newer movement. Pretty easy to see where the newer activity is occurring today. And it looks like making its shift to the west here. Uh, far as uh, Hawaii goes, we'll double check out here, see what we got going on. Slight increase in earthquake activity there across the southeastern area of Hawaii, the Big Island. Uh, but nothing big. Uh, just mainly some deeper activity. We'll double check the uh, Kilauea Volcano site here real quick. And see what we have on this fine Wednesday. Halfway through the work week. That's not bad. Not too shabby. Uh, we are still going up here. We do have, obviously, a, a number of of days to go before we match the previous level of inflation observed so no it's not i mean if it started erupting right now that'd be a, just kind of odd because there's not enough volume of magma there across this area to produce that eruption it definitely needs to fill up quite a bit more so really not too worried about that for now uh, space weather activity down there to the b flare category we do have an active region though peeking around the eastern limb um, see, we're at the B8.2 level, kind of flatlined, but I do see some bright features out there on the eastern limb indicating uh, an active sunspot region. This is still old, about a day old now. This is at UTC time. We should be getting close to the 23rd UTC time. Uh, so this is probably much further over here. But uh, kind of hard to see when, uh, kind of hard to figure it out if it's complex or not if you can't see it i'm just going by the uh, uv image here there's some bright areas indicating some flaring currently going on uh, from that sunspot right now flare threat pretty low but i'm sure that will ramp up a little bit once that gets into more earth directed view 15 percent chance for inflare x flare around one percent chance or so no aurora activity in the forecast good luck finding the moon uh, when it comes out not gonna not going to really see it out there, are you? Maybe. I don't know. Some people see they claim they can see the uh, uh, the moon there when it's uh, not lit up. All right. Let's see what we got here for the Storm Prediction Center. Not a whole lot of severe weather. Just kind of a thunderstorm day out there across the southwest. Portions of California as well. There's a low pressure system stirring things up out there. Uh, really not looking at anything major going on. There's that low. Just some thunderstorm activity. Uh, and then the Pacific Northwest gets hammered with some decent rain. We get some leftover crumbs and some sprinkles here in Northern California. A little disappointed because a week ago we were talking about a high risk of heavy precipitation out here in Northern California. Well, that's completely disappeared. And uh, we'll be lucky if we pick up a tenth of an inch of rain here around Chico, Yuba City, Calusa County. Redding northward, we'll probably get more. Kind of a little bit disappointed in that. I'm a, I'm a big wet weather fan water brings life i mean it's, there's life in the desert but uh well they but they get almost seems like they get more rainfall down there in their uh monsoonal season than we do the entire year out here in northern california unless you're along the extreme northern california coastline of course crescent city fort bragg eureka they always get the heavy duty rain uh anyway you know looking at the long-term models here a little disappointed because it's it looks like we got some ridging going on there across the west coast. I hope that changes. 
Let's see what we got here for any uh, hazard concerns. See, they're just they're actually keeping that up there surprisingly. Uh, they get a slight risk here for some heavy precipitation. Like I said, a week ago, high risk was down here across Northern California. Now, uh, let's see here. It doesn't even look like it's anywhere up there. Just kind of uh, fizzled out a little bit. Um, really no risk of any heavy snow. Just, uh, yeah, I'm sure we'll get some snow up in the mountains, but nothing like what they had called for. Most of the activity or hazards are up north there for some high winds uh, with that uh, low pressure system that's going to be zooming in there. Anyway, you know, we'll take what we can get, I guess. I'm just happy we got, we picked up over an inch of rain here. Uh, when was that? About a week or so ago. Maybe a little bit longer. That was kind of nice, but everything's dried out. Uh, let's see here. A little earthquake on Parkfield, California. A station there. I'm going to see what we got going on there. I, I don't see anything showing up, but there is a, a little spike showing up there on the Parkfield section. We'll just keep an eye here on the West Coast. I mean... Just a little interesting event there. Just be on guard, folks, because we could see a big event out here across the West Coast at any time, and it may not necessarily be the San Andreas fault. Uh, there's a you know there's a good handful of uh, fractures out here that have not had any big earthquake activity on them in thousands of years, and uh, here we are, 2025. Welcome to the future. We'll see you guys out here tonight for the Wednesday night update. Of course, unless something major happens, enjoy your day. Have a good one.